ways to affect the passer. Um, and that's, that's us up front as far as, you know, getting off. When guys got their one-on-ones, you got to win. Um, and trying to find ways to affect it in, in all types of ways. And um, that's something we didn't do last week that we got to do this week. So. He's just playing good football. Um, obviously, you know, he, he, he's mobile, but he's not as mobile. He's not looking to run, but he can run. So, um, but he's just playing good football right now. So, making making some good throws, um, being accurate, and, um, you know, looking good on film. So, You uh, talked last week about you rarely have opportunities where you're not blocked, but you did have one against the 49ers. What, when, as that play unfolded, what were you? Get to the quarterback. Just trying to get him down to the ground. That was it. You know, just trying to capitalize on the mistake they made. So. And were you surprised that, that you had that lane? Um, you surprised, but you just play. You don't think about it. You just just go on trying to find a way to affect the game. So. Um, we can get our hands up. Um, there's certain things we can do as far as, um, you know, on a defense, as far as drawing up certain things. But um, I ain't going to go in details about that. But, you know, we can get our hands up and just continue to play. You know, it's going to come in plays when he's going to have to hold the ball, and we got to find a way to get him down or affect him some way, somehow. And it's not always me. Um, it's a lot of other good football players out there that they need it when they want on ones. And um, if they want to find ways to, Focus on one guy. That's that's opportunity for other guys to you know make, be the playmaker. So you've gone against Ezekiel Elliott before. How physical is that matchup? And is he one of the more physical backs you've gone against? He's a good runner. Um, you know he, he got good cut, good balance. Um, he runs strong. Uh, I think they got two good backs that you know that one two punch is, is, is really good with them guys. So um, we got our hands full with them. You know, and, and I always start with you know trying to find a way to stop the run. Um, not letting them get that going, and then you know when we get our opportunities to trying to find a way to um, affect the quarterback. So, Aaron, there was a play I believe in the second quarter where you were in a standing up position to rush. Um, do you like that? Is that something that seems to be as new to me as it is to you? Um, I'm all for anything. Anyway, anything we can do. Um, to trying to find ways to you know free guys up or free me up. Um, I'm all for it, you know. I'm here to, you know, win games and, and on the verge of winning games, being productive and helping this team to win. So if, if that's something that I got to do, I'm comfortable doing it. Um, I feel like it's it's nothing that I lack as far as my abilities and certain things I can do. Um, but I'm, I'm down for whatever I can do to get, you know, get them opportunities to, you know, be effective and be a playmaker. So It, it felt like uncharacteristically you guys gave up big plays. That, that team seemed to always uh, dink and dunk. Is that – Fair assessment. Can you take something learned from Monday night about not giving up the big play to apply to the Dallas game? Yeah, a lot of that comes from tackling too. A lot of missed tackles and you know, and making big plays off guys missing tackles. That's that's us swarming and, and wrapping up and um, you know not letting guys slip out and, and, and create you know them them big plays. So um, overall, if, if I were to look at last week, um, I don't think we played horrible. I don't think we played great. I think we gave up a couple big plays. We could we could we could have did better on defense, and um, you know you, you learn from that. You watch it. It's, it's, it's not like it's, it's small things you can fix, um, but to be a successful defense, a successful team in this league, you can you get you can't miss tackles. You got to be um, consistent. You got to swarm, and that's all of us on defense. So. Well, you know what to expect. You know, a lot of times it's, you know, they might throw the ball, toss the ball one way and, and trying to, you know, collapse the three tech to get this, the short edge um, and, and bounce back to the seed. So um, going into the week, you kind of expect them type of things and there's certain things that we can do technique-wise to help with that. Um, it's just go out there playing. And, but obviously, you know, having guys out there you play with, you've been playing with it for a few years, that's had success. And, um, and if they hit you, you can communicate with them guys and trying to find ways to, 
um, you know, be more stout or be better at it, you know. So, um, you know, going going into weeks, you, you kind of prepare for things like that and knowing what's going to happen just because of, you know, a guy like Ashawn playing out four and five and he dominate to the point where they can, you know, try to solve seed and come back on the backside by washing a three, three tech down. So that's just um, at times me, you know, not playing as aggressive and um, being a little bit more stout, you know, on, on certain things too, so. Just a couple more. How important is this game to you guys, considering what happened Monday night, and then, you know, this is in a big NFC game to have playoff implications down the road. How important is it to you guys? Well, it's the next game, so support. You know, every week you want to find ways to win, no matter you know, who the opponent is. So, um, you know, it's, it's a big week for us because it's, 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 it's this week. So it's the new opponent, our opponent we got this week. So we got to try to find a way to um, do what we need to do as a team to win. So. I'm a supporter of the game. You know, you know you're going to get injuries. You know um, things are going to happen, adversity, whatever the case may be. But um, that's the point that, you know, the guys is behind you. You're trusting that they're going to step up and make things happen. So I'm um, a supporter of the business. Um, obviously, you wish all your guys could be out there healthy. But, you know, no, it's, it's, a, it's a valid sport. We play and things happen. But, you know, you just got to trust the next guys going to make plays and um, be productive. So. You only get Chick-fil-A when you win, media. No Chick-fil-A when you lose. How you guys doing? Outstanding. <laughs> we got Chick-fil-A. <laughs> that answer is it all. Uh, our pass rush, just in general, has to pick up. It was a big topic for us this week. Um, something that we got to get going, it's particularly our four-man rush. Um, all those things is what make us great. When those things get rolling and those things happen, um, our pass rushers get home, they cause disruption, they tip balls, they, they make the things happen that make defense easy. And we need more opportunities like that. We need more of those things like that in order to make the game easier for us to play on defense. You know, right now we're playing decent, but you can play so much better, and we all know what it looks like. And that's the thing. We know what it looks like when they're rushing well, when they're rushing great. It's not just the edge rushers. It's just a combination of it all. Um, the edge rushers had nothing to do when a quarterback was able to step up and pick up yards based on losing the integrity of our rush. And we got to fix some of those things just in our rush just in general. How much of that is the quick game opponent scheming you out of opportunities? To... That's a great excuse for life, but we tend not to use those. 
Um, everybody uses quick game. Everybody uses gets the ball out of their hand. You know, the whole key of it is timing, rhythm, and tempo. You talk about offense. So, you know, they threw it fast last year. But that's what I mean by that. Like the disruption, moving guys off the spot, tipping some of those balls, getting them out of their way, getting them out of rhythm, all those things make up for a good rush. Sometimes there's great rushes and there's not a stat. You know, sometimes there's great rushes and you have the, the sack, the sack fumble. Sometimes a great rush is a tip pass. Sometimes a great rush and it forces a guy to throw a bad, awkward ball. So, like, um, I'll never use the excuse of the ball getting out quick. The ball comes out quick every single year. Um, the ball comes out quick anytime you're going to be playing a guy like 99. It's come out quick his whole entire, you know, career with him being in a, in a you got to get the ball out quick. I remember game playing against him. And our whole game was, hey, we're going to start this game off. We're going to go quick game. We're going we're gonna to frustrate him. We're going to slide the cover to protection to him. And he hit the quarterback on the first snap on three-step. <laughs> And it was like, this is going to be a long day. You know, so um, you can never use those excuses. Those are always things that are always good to talk about in analytics. But for us, that shouldn't matter. Raheem, when you look at film of Cooper Rush, what is he doing that's allowing him to have so much success? I think it's just execution. I think he has a complete ownership of the offense. Um, you can tell by when he steps to the line of scrimmage and he barks out signals and calls to change at the line of scrimmage. You can tell by his command of, the hard count, getting people to jump off sides, getting to their all goes. Um, you can tell by his tempo offense when he gets a line of scrimmage, you know, a la us, getting up there quick, getting out of play, spitting it out, going through, it, going through the whole procedure. Um, it's not something that they're looking to babysit some young guy. I mean, you're talking about a guy that's got complete control of the offense and he's playing really well. Um, and that's exactly what I told the defense on uh, Wednesday. There was a play in the second quarter where you used Aaron Donald standing up. <laughs> Stop telling on me. Hopefully they didn't watch tape, but they didn't see it. It's uh, too late, right? Yeah, right. What, what was the strategy there, and did it work, and is that something you'll do again? Well, he dictates a lot of turns. He dictates a lot of protections. You know, like I just mentioned, we turned to him in our first play of the game, and um, when you can stand him up and give him an opportunity to rush from a standing up position, you can sort of make him as an outside back. Of course, they'll count him as a big. Maybe he gathers more attention. You're, you're dazzling something to make something else come the other way. Um, but it definitely opened up like we want it to. Um, Greg had a nice wrap, had a nice lane. That was one we were able to affect the quarterback pretty effectively. Um, and maybe we have to use more of those things to do it, you know, but you never, ever not go as far as you need to go in order to get pass rush. You know, affecting the quarterback for us is top priority. So if we can do those things, that happens the best way. This is Matt. Oh, go, ahead. Go, ahead. go ahead. You guys are so nice today. <laughs> I know. She came big with the trick. Yeah, that, that's funny. I never thought about it that way. I didn't even think about it that way. I don't even know about those stats. You know, I just think about him being a rusher and finding ways to get him in the different spots. So, Jordan, to be honest, that is a stumper because um, I never thought about it that way of him being a linebacker and getting a blitz for that. That's, that's pretty funny. Well, I guess to that point, it's like because of who he is, you're, you got, there's no uh, end to possibilities, it seems like. Is that kind of how you feel? Not with Aaron. You know, you're talking about one of the best players to ever play this game and um, he can do just about anything you ask him to do, and and the the willingness and the fun that he has doing those things is what I enjoy doing it the most, and enjoy setting up for him. So like, we gotta get, we'll get some more of those things going. It, it felt like uncharacteristically, you guys gave up two big plays. We did. Touchdowns. We've been doing a really good job in giving up big plays or or not giving up big plays, I should say. And I wouldn't say it's uncharacteristic against those guys, you know. We won a Super Bowl last year, and the only thing I saw in the summer was Debo Samuels catching screens and going to the house. And last night he caught a big-time catch on the under, uh, a China, Kyle calls it, and a young corner almost stepped right in front of it. It was almost a pick six for us, and it wasn't. He caught the ball. We missed a tackle, and once he breaks that kind of a leverage, he's a tough tackle. So he made that big play, and we gave it the one big run on a misfit. Um, you know, fortunately, Aaron wasn't in on that play. But um, the two big plays are the ones that haunt you as a defensive coordinator. Those are the one. Those are the two plays that come back at night to say we had a chance. You know, we even had a chance at the end. We went to that thing with a one possession game, and you know, obviously you guys saw the pick six. But um, those two big plays are the ones that always haunt you, just to find ways to win those games, find ways to win those moments. Um, and those guys do a great job of generating big plays for whether it be 19 doing it on his own. I mean, this is why I sit up here and tell you guys he should be consideration for the MVP every time we play him because he's absolutely outstanding. What is a miss? A couple more. A misfit. Oh, we didn't. I mean, we didn't. wasn't in the right gaps. Okay. You know, we got out our gap, got a big gash, went right down the middle on us. We missed it on the second level, and he made a big play on that run. The run in the past were, they were two big time plays by those guys. That was a great scheme by Kyle on the run. 
They ran an influence trap, got us out of gaps, got somebody reached, blocked it really well, right down the middle, um, just how I saw it. They ran it again later and we stopped it. Um, they caught the pass that close from being a great play for us, and that's talking about that way, to him making a great play the other way and being who he is. Love it. Love it. I would never, ever take that away from him. Like, you know, put yourself in those spots. You got you to put yourself out there to make those plays. And I don't know if Garoppolo meant to throw that ball behind him, but he did on that play. And if it's in the right spot, we may be talking about a different tune. I'm not going to slow down DK one bit. I absolutely love the aggressiveness of the nature of that play uh, for him, for all of us. Now, do I want to tackle him after that on a couple of different levels? No doubt. But again, we're talking about a great player that's done some great things in this league. You, you coached against CD Lamb before. Like, what's that matchup like? I mean, what, what sticks out about CD Lamb? When we saw CD was a rookie, mm -hmm. he was just getting to his groove. He was primarily playing slot. Um, they were doing some gimmick things, trying to give him the ball, put him in the backfield. They still do a little bit of that. Um, but now he's the clear cut number one. Um, he's lining up in different spots. They're moving around a bunch. Um, they're able to get him the rock um, at, a, at a high pace, particularly the Giants week. You know, last week, it seems like, you know, he's number one in a lot of those route combinations. He's playing with great confidence. I can't even say he's playing with great confidence. He's always played with great confidence. He's playing with more confidence, even he dad when he came in the league. And, you know, we got a chance to practice against him last year. I got a chance to see him live as a rookie. And now to see what he's become is kind of what you thought. He's one of these premier wideouts in his league that's going to be for a while. Which one now? On the fan. Oh, on the fan? I uh, actually didn't really know who it was at the time. But, I mean, you, you can't come on the field. I mean, these guys can have anything. You know, who knows what? He put anybody in harm's way. That's just – that's bad ball, you know, for people to be on the field. That's just – that's just disrespectful for the game. And, like um, – so I didn't know who it was. And then I heard all the rumors about Bobby taking him down and getting him off the field, helping those guys. But, you know, you had a San Fran guy blow out a hamstring. You got – it's just no place for that in our game. You know, they got to stay in their spot and we'll stay in our spots and, and everything happens right. Last one here. Um, you talked about quarterback and receivers, but Ezekiel Elliott and uh, Pollard, that combination, what kind of a challenge? Is it Pollard? I think it was Pollard. Pollard yeah. I'm going to make sure I'm saying this right because yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to follow with Pollard and I'll be bullets and board material. He doesn't even know your name. No, but, um, um, you're talking about two outstanding players, you know. I remember Zeke when he came out and how outstanding and dynamic he was and still is. You know, uh, we don't give him a lot of credit because of the, the stuff that he's been through just from a national standpoint, but he's running the ball well. They're running the ball about 75% of the time. Those two guys are carrying the bulk load of it all. They are an outstanding tandem. Um, you know, Pollard brings a little bit of more gas on the outside, some juice, and Zeke brings a, a, a down load, you know, just a load, just coming downhill and, and everything you want to handle. Um, so you're talking about Two really good running backs with a really good run game that we got to deal with. There's no doubt about that. All set? See you guys.
Must be nice. Must be nice. I just had some uh, just had some Greek that I don't know if it was made by anybody Greek. So it's good. No, it's good. Appreciate it. I didn't need any. I'm good. Uh, what's up, guys? Ah, oh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you'd really appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. No, I know. My wife brought us some last night, so I'm being greedy right now. So how do you attempt to finish drives and score touchdowns? Um, you know, if you look at some of the, the execution, specifically in the red area, um, you know, it, it's something that, we got to probably continue to practice and emphasize and, and work on as a unit together. There's so much of the work week that normal downs, third downs, G bot, um, and and if we can just emphasize maybe the red zone a little bit more, I think we can continue to do that as a staff, create more clarity for the players with the defensive structures that we're getting down there. It does get different, right? There's there's different structures. They play different coverages. And um, I think we can coach better in the red zone. I think our players can execute better. But it's a little bit of a combination. You saw us do some really nice things and, and get some sustained drives. We get down to the red area the last two games, and um, really even the Falcons game, and stall out a little bit, have a couple mistakes. And when you start to have those things come up, you look at, well, how, how are we coaching this? Is it getting through to these guys the right way? You know, do we need to detail things differently? Did he get that rep in practice? There's only so many reps that you get in practice, and sometimes it's hard to get every single player that might play in the game that rep. And so I think it's a combination of us as a staff creating clarity, but also the players being on the screws in terms of their responsibilities. Even though they might not get that rep in practice, other guys need to step up and be accountable as well. You know, it's this offense we know is kind of always built through the F, and um, it's it's on us to create, you know, continue to create, you know, make creative decisions to get him in spots to where we can get him the football. And we've played a couple structures. You look at 49ers, and you had touched on it, you know, last week was the Buffalo kind of thought and how they did some different things to take Allen out of the game. You got to be able to move him around a little bit and. Um, it's a work in progress. You know, it's a work in progress to try to get these guys in the right spots, but also um, get open in the timing and rhythm of the play and be on the screws where you need to be and when you need to be there, the trust, the you know, connection. We're still working on that. We're still building up on that right now. Yeah, to that point, how do you get him uh, involved in more high-probability plays? Yeah, um, it's a good question. I think that... You always want Cooper and, and, and things on the, you know, as the first read. And it's just really cre being more creative in terms of the ways that we can get him to be the primary. And you never want to take it away from guys' targets, but we do need to spread the targets around. We know that. Um, you know, but getting him in different formations, moving him around, things that we've, you know, kind of tried to do and talk about. But we just need to make sure that we do it. And he needs to be on the screws with those formations, the adjustments, which he's been great. But um, it's more so on us to be able to put him in that position. Yeah, it's it's really formation identification and, and formation variety. Really, at the end of the day, um, you know, like I said, you're going to actively take your triple crown winner and say he's not going to be the primary on some things, and you have to be okay with that. We have to be okay with that, and um, you know, it's it's fine to be able to do some of those things and move guys in different formations, personnel groupings, things like that that can you know try to create a little bit of more of a. Uh, a target for those guys as the primary, not just finding the ball. But as a receiver, um, sometimes it's difficult to find the just the ball can find you or it can't. And sometimes you got to be able to find a way to be more creative, like I mentioned. And uh, we're working through that right now. When it comes to you know, looking at Dallas, they seem your what you're struggling with in the red zone seems to be one of their strengths. Yeah. They're a good defense in general, but specifically, you know, I haven't really studied the red zone a ton right now, personally. Um, but I know they mix it up. They mix up some shell in the red zone, which is, I think, something that you're alluding to is they're a little bit more of a single high structure throughout normal downs. Third downs, they can mix it up, play a ton of man. And then as you start to get into that red area is when shell starts to show. Um, you know, that's 
we haven't really dissected it and gone into our plan of the red zone, but I think that we know where Allen can come alive down there, and we need to continue to put him in that position, whether it's the fade, the slant, some of those routes that we know that he runs well, he has time on task with, they have a connection with. Um, you know, just making sure we pick and choose our spots to get that coverage, and then if not, the ball needs to go elsewhere. But they are, they're a good defense overall, so um, I'm not surprised that they're really good on the, in the red zone as well. Yeah, I think just trying to create, you know, different formations. I think utilizing our tempo, whether it's going fast, slowing it down, just changing tempos a little bit. I think we can help um, create an edge, and then also just, um, you know, we we need to be better in, in our communication up front, but specifically with the backs as well. And you know, we missed a couple things in the Niners game um, that was really um, an execution issue. It wasn't really guys just getting beat. You know, we had a couple execution issues. Communication needs to be at a premium, especially, you know, crowd that we're probably expecting, um, you know, this past, this upcoming week. And uh, it's it's really a communication thing that we can be better at in terms of some of the protection and give credit to the 49ers pretty darn good at a rush. And so is Dallas. Um, we're, we're preparing for that, um, but we also need to create, you know, probably some better answers in some instances. But uh, we're working through those answers right now. Where, where was you most Just his versatility, probably, right? The, the way that they can line him up on the edge, inside, over the center, as a backer off the ball. I um, mean, there's just so many different things that they can utilize him with in normal personnel groupings for them. And typically, well, one personnel grouping comes in, well, you have a tip that maybe he's going to be on the line of scrimmage or off the ball. We don't really have a lot of those tips. It's really about finding him, identifying him, communicating where he is, and all being on the same page because we cannot have an op where he's running free. Is, is part of um, Allen's challenge having probably been the, the number one guy where he had previous two stops and now coming into a situation <laughs> where you have to extend routes and totally. not the number one guy? Yeah, some of that can probably come into play, I think, where – Routes maybe he's been running as a primary, you know, we're using for somebody else, and he needs to fit in a little bit in some ways and some concepts. We're such a progression offense that if number one in the progression is wide, you know, is open, he's typically going to throw it to him. Um, so I think that could play into some some of the things. But um, yeah, it's it's frustrating, and, and we're all working through it. But I do think when it does click, it'll be good. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the they're deep. Yeah, I mean they're playing. You look at the explosive reel, obviously from last season. If you're going into a game against the Los Angeles Rams, you're saying we're not going to get the ball thrown over our heads. From a just structural standpoint, when you go into the game, we haven't been doing that this season. But that was the mo last year. So I think that that's that's something you can tell defenses are working on. Um, and they are playing a little bit stickier underneath. So it's, you know, defenses are catching up, doing some really good things. And we've played some really good defenses as well. Got to give credit to them as well. So, um, you know, we're working through it, though. Last two, last two. Last two. Last two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. Um, you know, I think that. We can get Malcolm going a little bit. I, th- I do think this week, you know, I think we'll have a good feel for Daryl and Cam and be able to get those guys going. And, um, you know, I think we know we continue to run the ball better and get them more carries, just get these guys more touches. Sometimes um, guys get better as the game goes on. And um, when maybe you miss something early, miss a cut or doesn't work, it's, sometimes it's hard to go back to you like, well, how am I going to call that again when it just got stuffed for two? Um, but we got to just be a little bit more patient in some instances as a staff and continue to get going, get those guys going. Well, you have like all this turnover and injuries on the, the middle of the offensive yeah. line. How do you find a balance between helping those guys out yeah. and doing what you guys do? Well, do best offensively. Come on in our offices and we can talk about it, I guess. You know, I mean, no, it's, it's a good thing. I mean, got to give credit to Jeremiah Colone, first of all, for stepping up in a situation that he's never been put in. And um, being really cool, calm, collected, and, and being able to lead us in, a, in the right way. So um, it's a balance, man. It's a, it's a total balance of, well, we want to try to push the ball down the field, but we also need to protect. 
and we need to put these guys in the best position to protect it because if we can't get the ball off, we got no shot. Um, so it is an extreme balancing act to try to get some of those things off. Um, and we need to pick and choose our spots because it's, it's really, you call one on first down, maybe you have a better chance at getting single high defense versus shell, or you get a G-bot, and maybe it's a little bit more shell. So I think it's being a little bit more specific about where we do try to get the ball down the field and also, obviously, first and foremost, thinking about the O-line. All set. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.